I grew up with RTS games. I don't know about you guys, but I miss them. I, like when I was a kid, uh, StarCraft, Command and Conquer, Age of Empires, we had, th these were big games. It was a big genre and I feel like it's kind of just died off. I know it's still there, but anyway, I'm just saying I'm excited to see Age of Empires 4 and I hope it's good. Now, some good news is that so far, some reviews are out, not user reviews yet, because the game doesn't release till October 28th, but the Metacritic's not looking too bad, although obviously that doesn't necessarily mean everything. We'll need to actually try out the game. Now, good news on that front is if you have Game Pass for PC, it is releasing day one on Game Pass for PC, and that's how I'll be trying it out for sure. But this video is more about can your PC run it? Now I found a few different places to uh, look at the system requirements information. Now on the actual ageofempires.com page, we have this. And I also looked up articles about it, and this is interesting. I found this one at pcgamesn.com, and they seem to have a more detailed chart here, but I tried to figure out if they had a link to this chart, where are they getting this information, and I couldn't find anything. The minimum and recommended here match up to the minimum and recommended here, but I have no idea where they're getting this low and ideal setting from. So I'm gonna focus most of this discussion on what I actually found on this page with the minimum and recommended, but then I will jump in here and talk a bit about what we're seeing for low and ideal here in case maybe there was some more detailed chart made available to the people here or there's some, some resource I'm unaware of, maybe you guys know in the comments section. Anyway, here's the good news. The minimum is extremely minimal. So do you have a toaster? It might be able to run this. Well, probably not a toaster, but um, literally the graphics here aren't even dedicated video cards. It's saying the minimum is an Intel HD 520 or an AMD Radeon RX Vega 11. And what's really interesting to me here is what resolution settings and frame rate target this is. By minimum, do they mean like literally you set everything to low, including the resolution? Like we're talking 720p and we're doing 30 frames per second or less, question mark? Because one thing is with a real-time strategy game, you're definitely gonna be able to get away with lower frame rates than you can in like a first person shooter. I'm not saying it's ideal, but you don't need to swing the mouse around, camera movements don't need, right? You know what I mean? So I feel like maybe the minimums here are really minimal. So it doesn't give us resolution, frame rate targets, anything like that. I'm gonna assume this is extremely low um, just due to Intel HD 520, <laughs> okay? Um, now, jumping up to the recommended GPU, they are very clear to state four gigabytes of VRAM. And I even found this on another page they released for their, um, like a preview build of the game. And this one, in additional notes, even stressed four gigabytes of video RAM and 16 gigabytes of system RAM. So they are very much stressing four gigabytes for the recommended. So just keep that in mind. Now, the particular GPUs they selected were a GeForce 970 or an AMD RX 570. And I really love to see that because a lot of people have these GPUs or better. On a where does your GPU fall in relation to this kind of a chart? So this is a tech power up and I'll link it in my description if you wanna take a look. A GTX 970 and an RX 570, one thing I like to see is that these actually do roughly match up in terms of performance. And sometimes on system requirements charts, I'm like, where, how are they putting these at the same tier? These ones do seem to actually be at the same tier, which I love to see. Anyway, because <laughs> it just makes sense. Um, now, I will also mention that they're stressing four gigabytes. Technically, the 970 really had three and a half gigabytes of VRAM that actually ran at full speed. So maybe you can get away a little bit below that. And there was even a lawsuit about that, if I remember correctly. I owned a 970. I thought it was a great card, but it did have that issue. Now, um, if we go, okay, where does your GPU fall in relation to that? Well, let's look at this compared to some pretty popular GPUs. For example, if you have the GTX 1066 gigabyte, that's generally a little bit better than a GTX 970 and might be able to hi handle higher resolutions as well um, due to the increased uh, VRAM at six gigabytes. If you have the three gigabyte version, you might run into issues with them being so, so clear about the uh, four gigabyte limit. But that makes me wonder, okay, is, is recommended basically saying like 1080p, like maxed out ultra settings, maybe question mark, and then still question mark on is this 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second? 
I mean, the graphics of the game don't look uh, too crazy or anything like that. So I don't know, I wish they told us, but, but they don't. Anyway, so where does yours fall? Uh, RX 580 is pretty popular. That's again, usually pr pretty much on tier with the 1060, maybe even a little bit better, um, but pretty close. Uh, now, if you have something more like a uh, GTX 1050 Ti, that's another extremely popular GPU. That's actually following, falling pretty far below the recommended settings, but you're way above an Intel HD 520. So, I mean, uh, you're better than that. So I think you're going to be able to play the game. The question is, you know, what resolution and frame rates. Um, other popular cards, we've got things like the, uh, you know, the GTX 960, that's falling at about 63% of the recommendation. The G GTX 1050 non-TI is at like 55%. Now, in terms of being better than the recommended setting, you can, uh, by the way, if I'm not calling yours out, you can still see it on the list here or come to this page from my description. Uh, as far as being better than the recommended, you know, the uh, 1650 Super, for example, is like 15% better than the recommendation. A uh, 16, um, uh, sorry, 1660 is 28% better than recommended. 1660 Super is 43% better. 1070 is 47% better. 1660 Ti, and so on and so forth. Now, if we do read anything into this chart, which like I said, I don't know where they're getting this information from, we can now compare to the ideal and the low. So they're listing a uh, RTX 2070 or a Radeon RX 5700. Again, it's nice to see them actually putting cards that are roughly on the same tier level together. Um, but again, I don't know where this exactly came from. Um, they're listing that for ideal. Now, does that mean this is like 1440p or the game is being marketed as like uh, 4K visual fidelity? So is this for 4K? Question mark. I don't know, um, but those are the cards listed, the 2070 and the 5700 XT. Now compared to the 970, this is a big jump up. If we take a look in here, again, setting the 970 as our baseline of 100%, the RTX 2070 is 201%. In other words, basically double the graphics power. And the 5700 XT is slightly better than that on average. So we're seeing a big jump there. Again, that could give you the ability to maybe boost up to 1440p or 4K, or maybe if the um, maybe if these were targeting 30 FPS, then those were 60. But again, if they're if they're saying an HD 520 can run this game, I, I would certainly hope a 970 is running at at least 60 FPS 1080p. Okay, <laughs> because Intel HD 520. Okay. Anyway, now from the CPU side of things, there. Uh, on the minimums, they're listing a specific Intel model, the i5-6300U, or the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G. On the recommend, uh, recommended side of things, they're listing just any 6-core Intel i5 at 3.6 gigahertz, or AMD Ryzen 5 1600. Now, they're not saying exactly which Intel chip this is, but keep in mind that older i5s were uh, a lot of times 4-core, not 6-core. And it was some of the newer ones that jumped up to actually being six core. But since they didn't list a specific model here, I'm gonna focus in on the AMD Ryzen 5 1600. So I'm pulling up the Tom's hardware um, CPU tier list. And if we scroll through this, it starts out with like the Ryzen 9 5900X set at like 100% of this scale. Where does yours fall in relation to that? Well, if we uh, control F here <laughs> and search for the 1600, um, except that now there's uh, gonna be too many of those. Ah, Ryzen 5, 1600, there we go. Uh, that's gonna place us here at like, okay, basically 50%-ish, a little bit better of the performance on average to the 5900X in gaming. This is not talking multi-threading workloads, this is gaming workloads, and this, this chart isn't perfect. It, I'm just trying to show you how to kind of read this, okay? Now, um, what we can see here then is like the 2400G, uh, uh, G, which I believe was the um, uh, minimum recommendation, isn't actually too far off on, in terms of this tier list uh, from their recommended uh, G, uh, CPU. So I don't know, read into that what you will, although there are some differences here. The Ryzen 5 1600 is six core 12 thread uh, with these clock speeds. Whereas the 2500, sorry, 2400G has higher clock speeds in his four core eight thread. Um, and again, is being listed a bit lower. So the fact that they, they're saying that and that they listed uh, a six core Intel i5 tells me that this is programmed to at least take advantage of six cores, uh, maybe more, but at least six cores seems to be um, 
you know, what they designed it around. Now, four cores that are newer and faster can still outperform six cores that are older and slower. So don't read too much into that. But hey, there you go. Now, again, from the uh, memory requirements, they're jumping up from 8 to 16 when you get, go up to the recommendation. And again, if we hop on over to this, and if we're going to get anything out of this, um, they are bumping up to a i7-9700 and a Ryzen 5 3600. Maybe that's to hit some higher, uh, higher frame rates than 60, something like that. Now, while uh, the... Um, GPUs here, like, like the Intel HD 520, are extremely low uh, requirements. These CPU requirements, while not super high, these are also not incredibly low. Like, I would say this is an incredibly low GPU recommendation, and it's not an incredibly low CPU recommendation. So do keep that in mind. This game might need some CPU power for all of those units and whatever it's doing in the, in the background there. Now, again, if, I don't know if this chart is actually accurate or where they pulled it from, but if we look into the low, they're recommending the Intel i5-4460T, AMD Ryzen 3 1300X. So that's falling a bit uh, below our um, recommended requirements. And the GPUs are bumping down to a GTX 760 or Radeon 7950 with two gigabytes of VRAM. So hey, if you're trying to play it um, maybe on low settings. So this is where I'm feeling maybe recommended is the ultra settings. And then if you're playing at low settings here, and maybe like I said, minimums, maybe not even 1080p. So if we're going to read anything into this chart, that might be where I would go with that. And we'd see the GTX um, 760 fall. Sorry, my heater noise just kicked on. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Forgot to turn that off to film the video. But we're at GTX 760, right? So a GTX 770, GTX 760, that's coming in at 57% of the 970 in terms of average performance. So that might either be the drop from 60 FPS to 30 FPS, or it could uh, conclude a drop from like ultra settings to low settings in terms of that kind of doubling of the, of the system requirements. Uh, on that setting. All right, I don't want this video to go on forever. Are you guys interested? Are you going to buy this thing? I'm going to play it on PC Game Pass probably since I, I have that and I haven't played a good RTS in a while. Hopefully this is a good one. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.